I truly believe you guys are going to love the next mini album. I mean, I love it. This is way different from the other one in that I would consider this a step up in a professional look and feel. It has a focus on the photos that's very unique. And this is my design, so I'm very excited about it. So I want to have two parts again. This part is to build the base of the album, and then part two will be the pages of the album. So the base of the album is a concertina base. And so it's a technique of binding that requires um, no stitching. And so we're going to use adhesive and we're going to use another accordion fold. What you need to do is pull out whatever you use to score. So two 12 by 12 white sheets, preferably textured, and you're going to cut them to two 5 by 12 strips so that you end up with four 5 by 12 strips. And then you're going to score those 5 by 12 strips at 4 inches 3 times. So basically dividing it into three parts, you're going to score it at 4 inches. Take that inch 4 inch mark and put it at 4 inches and score again and you've done it. So you're going to score twice on each sheet. After you've scored it, you're going to accordion fold it. Don't worry about which side should be on the outside and the inside. Don't worry about that yet. Okay? Now what you'll end up with after you've done that with all four sheets is you're going to end up with the inside base of the concertina bind. So this is the kind of thing we want. So actually what's happening is we're taking these sheets and we're going to link them together like this so that they end up being one long strip. And no matter which side you're looking at, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pages. So each fold separates the pages. So just make sure whatever side um, you decide, texture or non-texture, that you're gluing down, that you glue them all so that the same side is facing the same way. So textured side facing out. And I'm just applying heat adhesive to one end of this one. And I do think you should put plenty of adhesive. Don't be cheap with your adhesive on this. And then lay that down so it's completely covering the other sheet. Shouldn't be any overhang if you cut these correctly. So there's my first attachment. And then I'm going to keep going. So that end here. And I'm just kind of looking at the paper to see what side the... Um, texture is on and I'm just keeping it all the same so it's not changing if on one side if it's not textured I make sure it stays not textured and you can just flip the papers around to make that happen so I'm gonna lay this down again being very careful to line it up properly that is so important with this binding and it's also important to cut it right um, so that you don't have an issue of um, how can I say, misaligned pages. Okay, so I'm almost done. I have to attach the last one. So I'm just going to put adhesive on my last one. So this is really easy, even though it's a very popular binding technique, well known in book arts. I don't know about you, but I love book art. And book art is... Um, the idea of making something readable, but yet artistic. Um, so it's kind of cool. So I think I have it all done now. So once I've closed it all up, this is now just one continual zigzag. Okay? So that's the base of my pages. If you feel like some of the pages are not lining up, just go ahead and use your bone folder to uh, assure that the score lines are nice and clean and that it's lining up properly. If you have an advanced paper cutter and you need to trim off any unevenness, go ahead and do that. Okay, But be careful not to trim off too much. Um, I'm very happy with this. It has a slight bit of overlap, like tiny, tiny bit. 
it's not going to matter you'll see so I'm not going to stress over that but you see how nicely it closes into a book now we're going to make the covers for this base so you you get the on board and you cut it down to four by five um, because this is five by whatever we ended up with because we connected all those 12 inch papers so we want the uh, this to act as a cover so we need it to be five and then by four which is the um, the width of the book so I ran it through the Xyron to make it sticky but you can use sticky tape you can use PVA whatever is your favorite adhesive and you pick um, a cardstock that you like. I like to use designer series paper for this. You could also use book cloth for this, which would, give it, which would kick it up probably another notch. One of my favorite designer series paper is the, um, I think this is called the Woodland Walk, and it has a complimentary stamp set, which we're going to use as well. So I just, I love it when Stamping Up does that. Stamp set and designer series paper teaming up together, it's wonderful. So I've already uh, have adhesive on one side, so I'm going to stick this down. So to cut your designer series paper, just give yourself at least an inch extra than the cover. And then we're going to um, cut a little uh, diagonal off of each edge. And how close I get to this board depends on how thick it is. Because you want the distance from the board to the diagonal that I cut to be equal to the thickness of the chipboard okay and so I'm just a little bit more but again you know me I'm gonna let you know you're not supposed to stress over this okay a little bit off it's okay so I'm just gonna cut this diagonal on each one this is gonna give me the ability to have a nice clean full I'm going to take some tacky tape. Uh, we do sell this, and I should be posting all of the item numbers as I speak. What you want to do with your tape is you want to put it down on all four sides before you start gluing anything down. So don't do it in sections. And the reason being is because you, you want your sticky tape to be under all the paper. If you did it in sections, the sticky tape would be on top of some of the paper. So I'm just going to put all the tape down. If you feel like you need one in the middle, go ahead. I don't think it's necessary, but hey, let's be extra specially sure. And then I'm going to take all the tape, except for that middle one, off. Because that middle one's really going to apply when I attach the whole the covers to the concentrator bind okay now the key to doing this is to kind of like lean against the bottom of the the board kind of pull it forward to you and what you're doing is you're creasing that edge there so you just lay it down and then pull it forward and it gives it a nice connection and then you lay down I like to lay the ends down first the key to this, and again, this is a little tricky thing, is you want to make sure when you lay it down that you don't go around, all right? And so I have this tape under here, and I probably get it. Okay. So you don't want to go around. You want to do opposite ends, and that will give you a nice, clean corner. So I just tuck this in because there's a little bit kind of like needs to be tucked in, and I'll just it's kind of a nip and tuck, a whole lot cheaper than the other kind. And then I'm going to pull that over, and you see what a nice corner I get? Get that really nice, clean corner. You know me, I like clean. And then I'm just going to pull that in, pull that in, and I'm going to get that nice, clean corner again. And there's our cover. And I've already done that, so you should end up with two covers like that. And what you want to do is you want to put tape on this. Um, just getting ready, okay? We won't do this until after we're done stamping, preparing the pages, but what will end up being the base is we will actually connect the last page on each of these, and there we have our Constantiner bind. But I'm going to ask you to be brave and not connect the covers yet, because we're going to want the flatness for stamping and for attaching our pages. So just put aside the whole piece, put it aside and we're gonna do in the second visit vid video we're gonna do the um,
pages, the inside pieces. So come back for part two.